Welcome to our very first uh, Analyst Day for Autonomy. I really hope that this is something we can do a little bit more regularly now um, to keep you posted about the, uh, the development we're doing with regards to autonomous driving. So about three years ago, we wanted to use, uh, we wanted to find the best possible chip for um, full autonomy. And we found out that there's no chip that's been designed from ground up for neural nets. So we invited uh, my colleague Pete Bannon, uh, the VP of Silicon Engineering, to design such chip for us. Um, I was hired in February of 2016. I asked Elon if he was willing to spend all the money it takes to do full custom system design. And he said, well, uh, are we going to win? And I said, well, yeah, of course. So he said, I'm in. And uh, so that got us started. We hired a bunch of people and, and started thinking about what a, full, uh, what a custom design chip for full autonomy would look like. We spent 18 months uh, doing the design. And in August of 2017, we released the design for manufacturing. We got it back in December. It powered up. And it actually worked very, very well on the first try. We made a few changes and released a B0 rev in April of 2018. In July of uh, 2018, uh, the chip was qualified, and we started uh, full production of uh, production quality parts. In December of 2018, we had the autonomous driving stack running on the new hardware, and we were able to start uh, retrofitting employee cars and testing the hardware and software out in the real world. Uh, just last March, we started shipping uh, the new computer in the Model S and X. And just earlier in April, we started production in Model 3. So this whole program, from the hiring of the first few employees to having it in full production in all three of our cars is just a little over three years. And it's probably the fastest uh, system development program I've ever been associated with. And it really speaks a lot to the advantages of having a tremendous amount of vertical integration um, to allow you to do concurrent engineering and speed up deployment. And I'll introduce you to the full self-driving computer and tell you a little bit about how it works. We'll dive into the chip itself and go through some of those details. I'll describe how the custom neural network accelerator that we designed works, and then I'll show you some results. Uh, one of those goals was to keep the power under 100 watts so that we could retrofit the new machine into the existing cars. Um, we also wanted a lower part cost so we could enable full redundancy for safety. At the time, we had a thumb in the wind estimate that it would take at least 50 trillion operations a second of neural network performance to drive a car. And so we wanted to get at least that much and, and really as much as we possibly could. In terms of actually doing the chip design, uh, as Elon alluded earlier, there was really no ground up neural network accelerator in existence in 2016. Everybody out there was adding instructions to their CPU or GPU or DSP to make it better for inference. But nobody was really just doing it. Uh, natively. And then for other components on the chip, we purchased industry standard uh, IP for CPUs and GPUs. That allowed us to minimize the uh, design time and also the risk uh, to the program. Here's what it looks like. Uh, over there on the right, you see all the connectors for the video that comes in from our, the eight cameras that are in the car. You can see the two self-driving computers in the middle of the board. And then on the left is the power supply and some control connections. And so I really love it when a solution is boiled down to its barest elements. You have video, computing, and power. And, and uh, it's uh, straightforward and simple. Here's the original hardware 2.5 enclosure that the computer went into. And we've been shipping for the last two years. Here's the new design for the FSD computer. It's basically the same. And that, of course, is driven by the constraints of having a retrofit program for the cars. Um, I'd like to point out that this is actually a pretty small computer. It fits behind the glove box, between the glove box and the firewall in the car. It does not take up half your trunk. As I said earlier, there's two fully independent computers on the board. Uh, you can see them there highlighted in blue and green. Uh, to either side of the large SOC, you can see the DRAM chips for, that we use for storage. And then below left, you see the flash chips that represent the file system. So these are two independent computers that boot up and run their own operating system. Uh, yeah, if I can add something, the, I mean, the general principle here is that it, any part of this could fail, and the car will keep driving. So you could have cameras fail. You could have uh, power circuits fail. You could have one of the Tesla full-self-driving full computer chips fail. Car keeps driving. Uh, the probability of, the, of this computer failing is substantially lower than somebody losing consciousness. 
That's, that's the key metric, at least in order of magnitude. In order to have a self-driving car or robo-taxi, you really need redundancy throughout the vehicle at the hardware level. Um, so starting in, I believe it was October 2016, uh, all cars made by Tesla have redundant uh, power steering. So we have redundant motors on the power steering. So any one failure of the, if, if, a, if the motor fails, the car can still steer. Um, all of the power and data lines have redundancy. So you can sever any given power line or any data line, and the car will keep driving. The uh, auxiliary power system, uh, even if the main pack, you lose complete power in the main pack, the car is capable of steering and braking uh, using the auxiliary power system. So you can completely lose the main pack, and the, 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 the car is safe. So in, in terms of driving the car, the basic sequence is collect lots of information from the, the world around you. Not only do we have cameras, we also have radar, GPS, maps, the IMUs, ultrasonic sensors around the car. We have wheel ticks, steering angle. We know what the acceleration and deceleration of the car is supposed to be. All of that gets integrated together to form a plan. Once we have a plan, the two machines exchange their independent uh, version of the plan to make sure it's the same. And assuming that we agree, we then act and drive the car. Now, once you've driven the car with some new control, you of course want to validate it. So we validate that what we transmitted was what we intend to transmit to the other actuators in the car. And then you can use the sensor suite to make sure that it happens. So if you ask the car to accelerate or brake or steer right or left, you can look at the accelerometers and make sure that you are, in fact, doing that. So there's a tremendous amount of redundancy and overlap in both our data acquisition and our data monitoring capabilities here. Moving on to talk about the full self-driving chip a little bit. It's packaged in a 37.5 millimeter BGA with 1,600 balls. Most of those are used for power and ground, but plenty for signal as well. If you take the lid off, it looks like this. You can see the packaged substrate, and you can see the die sitting in the center there. If you take the die off and flip it over, it looks like this. There's 13,000 C4 bumps scattered across the top of the die. And then underneath that are 12 metal layers. And if you, uh, which is obscuring all the details of the design. So if you strip that off, it looks like this. So moving on to talk about the neural network accelerator. On the left there is a, a cartoon of a neural network, uh, just to give you an idea of what's going on. Uh, the data comes in at the top and visits each of the boxes, and the data flows along the arrows uh, to the different boxes. Um, the boxes are typically convolutions or deconvolutions with relus. The green boxes are pooling layers. We had a goal to stay under 100 watts. This is measured data from cars driving around running the full autopilot stack. And we're dissipating 72 watts, which is a little bit more power than the previous design. But with the dramatic improvement in performance, it's still a pretty good answer. Um, of that 72 watts, about 15 watts is, is being consumed running the neural networks. In terms of cost, the silicon cost of this solution is about 80% of what we were paying before. So we are saving money by uh, switching to this solution. And in terms of performance, we took the narrow camera uh, neural network, which I've been talking about, that has 35 billion operations in it. We ran it on the old hardware as, uh, in a loop as quick as possible, and we delivered 110 frames per second. We took the same data, the same network, uh, compiled it for hardware for the new FSD computer. Uh, and using all four accelerators, we can get 2,300 frames per second processed. So a factor of 21. I think this, this is perhaps the most significant slide. It's night and day. I've never worked on a project where the performance increase was more than three. <laughs> so this, this was pretty fun. If you compare it to, uh, say, NVIDIA's Drive Xavier solution, a single chip uh, delivers 21 teraops. Um, our full self-driving computer with two chips is 144 teraops. So, to conclude, um, I, th I think we've created a design that delivers outstanding performance, 144 teraops for neural network processing. It has outstanding power performance. We managed to jam all of that performance into the thermal budget that we had. It enables a fully redundant computing solution. It has a modest cost. And really, the important thing is that this FSD computer will enable a new level of safety and autonomy in Tesla's vehicles without impacting their cost or range, something that I think we're all looking forward to. Yeah, to, to be clear, like the, the, the strategy here, and it, this, this started uh, you know, basically three, a little over three years ago, was uh, design and build a computer that is fully op optimized and aiming for full self-driving. 
then write software that is designed to work specifically on that computer and get the most out of that computer. So you have tailored hardware uh, that, is, that is a master of one trade, self-driving. Um, the uh, NVIDIA is a great company, but they have many customers. And so when, as, as, they, as they apply their resources, they need to uh, do a generalized solution. Um, I, we care about one thing, self-driving. Um, so that it was designed to do that incredibly well. The software is also designed to run on that hardware incredibly well. Uh, and the combination of the software and the hardware, I think, is unbeatable. Mm -hmm. We finished this design like maybe one and a half, two years ago, and began design of the next generation. We're not talking about the next generation today, but <laughs> we're about halfway through it. That will, all the things that are obvious for a next generation chip we're doing. Yeah. It, it'll be at least, let's say, three times better than the current system. It, at first, it seems improbable. How could it be that Tesla, who has never designed a chip before, would design the best chip in the world? But that is objectively what has occurred. Not, not best by a small margin, best by a huge margin. It's in the cars right now. All Teslas being produced right now have this computer. We switched over from the NVIDIA solution for SNX about a month ago, and we switched, switched over uh, Model 3 about 10 days ago. All cars being produced have, the, have all the hardware necessary, compute and otherwise, for full self-driving.